January 5th, 1945. Five days before combat begins, Enterprise meets up with its task force. There are six full-size carriers, six light carriers, battleships, destroyers, and support craft. 116 ships in all. The most powerful naval strike force the world has ever seen. The task force makes its way to the South China Sea. It is the first time that Allied forces have entered the Japanese-controlled sea since the war began. The night attack on the Japanese convoy is only the first strike. Over the next three days, Bill Martin's night group bombs Japanese-held Saigon, Hong Kong, and Canton. The first strikes on these vital mainland ports. In less than two weeks, the pilots of the Big E fly 4,000 miles, sink 200,000 tons of shipping, and strike at the mainland outposts of Japan's empire. The night fighters are already proving their worth. Two weeks later, Enterprise gets its biggest challenge. Target, Kyurun Harbor, Formosa. Objective, destroy enemy shipping and supply bases. Strategy, night attack with bombers. January 22nd, 2 a.m. Seven TBM Avengers launch into the night. Each carries two 500-pound bombs, six five-inch rockets, one pilot, one electronics officer, and one radar operator. Bill Martin personally leads three planes in the Formosa strike. The other section is led once again by Lieutenant Russ Kippen. They fly due west for 212 miles, then northwest for another 100 miles, until they reach the island of Formosa. The radar man picks up the pattern of Kurun Harbor on the radar scopes at 4.30 a.m. The attack begins. The TBM's targets are the outer and inner harbors, fat with supply ships. Land-based targets are vital oil tanks and a small arms factory. But those who fly by radar can die by radar. Japanese radar picks up the incoming attackers and anti-aircraft fills the sky. Bill Martin has a simple plan based on his intimate knowledge of radar operations. He climbs to 8,000 feet and flies toward the inner harbor guided by radar. Japanese anti-aircraft point toward him. What the enemy doesn't know is that Russ Kippen is flying 8,000 feet directly below him so that both planes show up as a single blip on the Japanese radar. As the anti-aircraft targets the high planes, Kippen's Avengers soar in undetected. The flight group makes three runs using the same technique, dropping their bombs on tankers and warehouses. One Avenger unleashes its rockets on a small arms factory. It makes a satisfying fireworks display. The night bombers of Enterprise keep up the pressure on the enemy with midnight attacks on the Japanese home islands and even on Tokyo itself. And now that the Japanese know they can be hit, they become more ferocious in their defenses and more desperate in their attacks. So for the Japanese, 
they're turning up the intensity, they're fighting more savagely, they're resisting with more and more stubbornness. Nowhere is Japan's desperate newfound ferocity more evident than at the tiny strip of Pacific land called Iwo Jima. It's a small island, but America needs it as an air base to launch B-29 bombers to strike the Japanese mainland. And the Japanese have no intention of giving it up. 